on the subject of Michael Jackson because we know you're a bit of a an expert and we know you've been appearing on some other radio stations yeah. of late and have had quite a lot to say about this documentary. Yeah, well, before um, before I worked for the YA, I was a freelancer and one of my roles was as a stringer, uh, showbiz stringer for The Sun and my area of specialism was Michael Jackson. If anything mm. happened Michael Jackson related, they always would come to me. Um, and so I was quite expert anyway. And then uh, 2010, uh, for the Huffington Post, I wrote a very in-depth article mm. about Michael Jackson's trial in 2005. It was the fifth anniversary of the verdict in the trial. And um, what I did was I spent a couple of months going back and rereading the entire trial transcript and then comparing the transcript to the media coverage. And I wrote a 5,000 word uh, essay exposing the horrendous um, mm. deception in the media's coverage of that trial. And we're seeing the same thing happening right mm. now with this documentary. Fake news? Fake news? It, I mean, I hate the phrase fake news um, because Donald Trump has used it to weaponize idiocy against the mm. media. Uh, but then you look at the way that this uh, TV show is being cover it, co uh, covered and it is fake news, you know. Yeah. There's no other phrase for it. It's total fake news. Aren't these There's people that are being interviewed about being molested or whatever, and I will warn parents now if children are listening, um, you know, some of the testimonies of the people we're hearing now, are pe they, these were thrown out years ago, weren't they? Yeah, so there are two men who maintained for decades that Michael Jackson was innocent, including under oath, uh, defending him in, in legal proceedings, and then both of whom hit hard times a couple of years after he died and then changed their stories and started suing his estate for hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, their case That's has been thrown out... about, of, isn't it, the money? Well, the case has been thrown out of court twice, and one of them, uh, the judge uh, reprimanded them and threw their entire witness statement out mm. of court because he found that they had provably and deliberately lied under oath. Mm. Um, so they changed their stories, <clears throat> didn't they, as well? That, so well, they, since they... Yeah. Yeah, first they changed their stories from saying he was innocent to saying he was guilty, and now since doing that, they've changed their stories again and again and again. And even in this TV show... Um, they tell stories which directly contradict the stories they told mm. under oath in their lawsuit, which is ongoing. Um, and the the film, uh, so film, the TV show is um, uh, it doesn't make any attempt to investigate any of these allegations whatsoever. It simply takes these men at their word and presents their testimony, um, carefully selected and edited. Uh, with zero supporting evidence and completely covers mm. up and omits all of the public record information, the court documents which have been accrued over the last five years of legal fighting, um, which demonstrates that they've been thoroughly dishonest and inconsistent. Mm. Um, you know, even if you take it at a very Janet and John basic level, both of these men have previously sworn under oath that Michael Jackson was innocent. They're now swearing in new legal proceedings that he's guilty. That means that whether you believe them now or you believe them then, either way, they're perjurers. Yeah, they're liars yeah. and perjurers. And, for, and as a journalist, it's inconceivable to me, you know, that this, this guy, this director of this documentary, has taken two perjurers at their word and not only has done that, which is so unethical anyway, and no journalist with any ethics would do that. Why wasn't Channel 4 letting this stuff go out then? Well, Just it's bums it, on seats. Bums on seats. It, it's, yeah. um, it's, it's only legal because Michael Jackson is dead. If mm. Michael Jackson was alive... Well, he'd uh, be liable, suing by now, wouldn't yeah, he? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, defamation laws would protect him. But w as soon as you die in Britain and in America, defamation laws cease to protect you. So if I died right now, uh, the media could call me anything. They could call me mm. Jack the Ripper. They could call me the Black Dahlia Killer. They well, could call like me anything. Well, like what's happened with Jimmy Savile. And, uh, you know, I know this, this is another case in point, and I know there's been uh, d testimonies that have been upheld. Mm. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there have been such a lot of them. Such a lot well, of them. The, yeah. I wonder if a lot of them jump on the bandwagon and make it look, you know... Well, the Ten number, times worse than it was. The number of allegations against Savile is is extraordinary. You know, yeah. compared to Michael Jackson. I mean, Michael Jackson is infinitesimal compared to Jimmy Savile. Um, I think the lawyers. There were some lawyers who were representing some Jimmy Savile victims in uh, a class action lawsuit against the BBC, and those lawyers said, um, even though it's clear to us that he was an abuser. 
um, it's almost certain that some of the people that have come afo- come forward will yeah. be just jumping in and trying to make money. I mean, the difference between Savile and Michael Jackson is with Savile. Uh, although we didn't know it until after he died, there were multiple people who went to the police and filed police reports uh, with no financial motive whatsoever. And what happened was, on their own mm. merits, those cases were not uh, sufficient to bring a prosecution. But had the police been joined up, had they all known about each other's cases, then the cases might have corroborated each other and uh, made a, formed a basis for a successful prosecution. So it was a police error. Uh, the police should have been pooling their intelligence and they weren't. The The difference with Michael Jackson is there has never been an accuser who's walked into a police station with no financial motive and said, I want to f- no. make a complaint. Every single person who's ever accused him has gone straight to a lawyer and mm. said, I want some money. And, um, and that's massively damaging uh, to the credibility of those accusers, especially when they're then caught perjuring themselves and... Uh, contradicting their own stories, contradicting each other's stories, you know, telling provable lies. Um, there has never been a credible case against Jackson, and, and this documentary is a travesty um, in the sense that even if the director believes Michael Jackson is guilty, he still has a duty um, to be balanced. And yeah. he still has a duty to keep the audience informed of anything which would undermine the credibility of his two accusers. He doesn't even mention in the whole of the TV show that these men are suing Michael Jackson. Mm. They ha- and in fact, not only does he not mention it, he's given multiple interviews in the last three or four weeks where he keeps saying these men have no financial motive to tell this story. Mm. They literally have an which ongoing lawsuit for hundreds yeah. of millions of dollars and he keeps saying they have no financial motive, which is just thoroughly dishonest. Um, and so what, what's annoying me, I'm not really standing, because I've been doing interviews for BBC all week in different regions all over the country, I'm not really even standing up for Michael Jackson, I'm standing up for journalism. This, yes. is, it, this is appalling journalism, and it shames our entire industry. And what is irritating me more is that the rest of the media is just going along with it. Um, they're just parroting the claims from this documentary. These court documents are public records. Anybody who wants to get hold of them can get hold of them. It's very easy. The media, if they're reporting on this case, has a duty to do their homework, do their research, and tell both sides of the story. Well, Michael and they're Jackson just was not doing it. Michael Jackson was taken to court. He was yeah. found not guilty. He was so completely th- acquitted by yeah. an independent jury. Yeah. So, so that should be the end of it. Well, if new allegations come forward, then they should, of course, be taken seriously. But taking them seriously includes investigating them and seeing whether they stand up to scrutiny and that's not happening here they're being accepted at face value with zero scrutiny when there is ample evidence in the public domain where his reputation has already been tarnished once yeah yeah well we're i mean you know we're seeing um some some red not bbc2 uh, radio 2 which was again fake news but some radio stations in new zealand and, and other places are starting to pull his songs from the air yeah. and it's just a reaction which which yeah. they did at the time of his trial which yeah. okay fair enough while well, you've got a trial pending then fine you sort of sit on the fence but then i noticed after uh, he was found not guilty and acquitted uh, the songs didn't return to the airwaves and i noticed they only started playing them again on other radio stations when he died yeah yeah the the other thing that's quite bunch of hypocrites <laughs> they are hypocrites that's and the other thing that's that's funny is the complete revisionism where the director and members of the media are now writing stories and doing interviews saying well you know, we we all turned a blind eye because he was a celebrity. Turned a blind eye. They literally, they called him a freak. They called him guilty. Mm. They called him a molester. They made up all sorts of ridiculous stories about him. They harassed him every single day of his life. Mm. They camped outside his house. They published photographs of him looking awful and mocked him. They called him the plastic-faced freak. The idea that this man was put on a pedestal and treated as a god is absolutely fictitious. Mm. He was He was lynched. Mm. And um, it, it's, I remember, it's, yeah. didn't it all start with this Martin Bashir documentary in the mid nineties? No, um, it started with the Geordie Chandler allegations in the mid nineties. Martin Bashir came along in two thousand and three, and his uh, documentary directly spawned the mm. allegations, which led to Michael Jackson's trial in two thousand. I remember watching that documentary, and uh, Michael Jackson showed uh, Bashir around Neverland. Yeah, and yeah. and and. and 
but uh, uh, he came across Michael Jackson as this kind of innocent Peter Pan kind of figure to me that uh, was perhaps a little bit naive. There's no question that he was nuts. He certainly was nuts. His own family will admit, listen, his behaviour was very strange. We mm. all know it was strange, but listen, his whole life was strange. That doesn't make him evil. You know, it doesn't make... Yeah, there's a difference between being... Yeah, being yeah, eccentric and taking, being a criminal. Taking, you know, the kind of course of action people have done against him, you know, it seems to be more like because of the way he looked. It absolutely was. Be yeah, I mean, they, they absolutely ridiculed him. They, I mean, it his autopsy report was very interesting. It be that's a public document, and it completely vindicated him on several fronts. For years, they accused him of lying about having a skin disease and accused him of bleaching his skin because he hated his race. Vitiligo His, or his autopsy wasn't it? report confirmed he had vitiligo. The autopsy report also um, discredited the very first allegations that were ever made against him, the Geordie Chandra allegations, Geordie Chandler was uh, reported at the time to have accurately described Michael Jackson's genitals. And um, when the autopsy report came out, it completely disproved that description. Mm. Geordie Chandler, who was Jewish, had described Michael Jackson as being circumcised. And when his autopsy report was published, it turned out he was not. Um, so that was the very first allegation that was ever made. And it was discredited at the time, and it was further discredited when Michael Jackson died got no coverage whatsoever and i'm not saying that the whole media should be jumping up and down and saying leave michael jackson alone they should of course be reporting on this matter because it is news but they should be reporting on it in a professional ethical even-handed and balanced way and that's just not happening and that's what's frustrating for me because it's also it's like you're watching the media commit suicide in real time the media is really struggling to cling on to its audience at the moment because young people don't engage with traditional media mm. they're all over social media and they don't really pay any attention to newspapers magazines um tv shows even they, they very rarely watch scheduled tv now it's all about streaming mm. services so what you're tr if it, a time when you're trying to keep hold of your audience it's vital that you don't discredit yourself and give people a reason to switch you off or to tune you out and what you're seeing on social media right now, if you watch the, the social media posts about this story, you're seeing a huge divide between older people and younger people. And younger people, what they're doing is they're going on Google, they're going on Reddit, they're going on various websites, researching this case for themselves, downloading the court documents, and they're seeing that what the media is reporting does not tally with mm. what is in the official public record and it's just switching people off of of traditional media and we are going to render ourselves extinct yet the industry is going to kill itself it's hastening its own demise every time it does this and it doesn't just do it to michael jackson it does it on lots of issues and it needs to you know like for instance uh, daily isn't Mail there another da part of this documentary to come as well yeah it, the second part is tonight right, yeah okay um yeah so but you know you see it with uh, major newspapers who um deny climate change just makes them yeah. look ludicrous you know so I, I just don't understand why they do it they're killing themselves off and um and it, and it does not cover us in glory so uh, you know i wish my industry would get its act together and just do its job professionally and um as long as it continues not to i'll continue mm. speaking out on various bbc shows and on gateway <laughs> <laughs> well on gateway some balanced reporting this yeah. afternoon on the drive time show where we have to break for travel we're running a little bit behind time with that little chat about michael jackson more about the news in just a moment Woo! 